Let me paint a picture. It's Christmas of 2003, and my grandma walks into the room with a gift bag in her hand. She then pulls out what looks like a CD case. She tosses it in my direction, and it hits me right in the face. <gasps> and I cried. I cried. I wasn't fast enough to catch it. Anyway, after I got done crying, I saw it. It was Battle for Bikini Bottom for the Nintendo GameCube. Being a huge fan of Spongebob at the time, it was like a dream come true. I popped it into the console, I booted it up, we saw that all too familiar GameCube splash screen, and before I knew it, boom, the Spongebob theme song started to play and I would play it for you guys, but it's copyrighted and everybody knows what it sounds like. Don't even kid yourself. But from the opening, I knew this game was going to be something special. It took me almost an entire Christmas break to beat it. And I didn't regret any of it. And I loved it. Just look at my reaction. To leaving the pineapple again almost 20 years later. Oh my god, the nostalgia! You know, hold on, hold on, hold on. Make sure to rate my dance moves from 1 to 10 in the comments section. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The game starts you in the pineapple with the homie Spongebob. I started to collect these shiny objects. Well, at least that's what Mr. Krabs calls them in the letter, and I, that's what we'll call them going forward. It's the game's currency, which is used to unlock certain paths or to get certain spatulas later. So listening to the note from Mr. Krabs, I continue to collect them. While I was collecting, I did notice that this door here has a cost of shiny objects to open it. So I opened it as soon as I had it enough, and I collect the first of many golden spatulas. Basically, this game's equivalent of the Jiggies from Banjo-Kazooie, or the, sh the, or the Shine Sprites from Mario Sunshine, if you will. I pay the toll to get into Spongebob's room, and I bounce on his bed. And I see that his underpants are the game's healing items. Get hurt in any sense of the form, put on a fresh pair of undies to heal all those flesh wounds. Opening the next door, we end up in Spongebob's library. Just a quick little area where we can get the hang of our movement and combat abilities that we currently have in our arsenal. With that done, I think it's time to finally leave the pineapple and get this journey going. Before we go any further, go into the comments section, let me know your guys' first experiences with this game, I would love to hear it. Leaving the pineapple for the first time, we get yelled at by Plankton, and he explains the gist of what we're going to be doing the whole game. Collecting those golden spatulas we saw on the pineapple, and to get back into the chum buck and finally stop the robots running around Bikini Bottom. Heading right to the pineapple, we bump into Mr. Krabs, who is in voice by Clancy Brown, I assure you, who tells us that he will take our shiny objects off our hands to fuel his ketamine addiction in exchange for golden spatulas. Thanks, Mr. Krabs. Real nice of you to exploit the lives of Bikini Bottomites for drugs. Doing that to the homie Sponge, what's wrong with you? I tried performing some speedrun tricks I saw on Twitch and YouTube, and I gotta say, it felt pretty good. Just to fuck it up and end up having to do it again. Also, I collected the first of three golden underpants. Why did I say it like that? And I also collected the first of three golden underpants. These golden underpants increase your max HP by one, and there's one in each section of Bikini Bottom. With that taken care of, I decided it's time to go bother Squidward. Immediately I start destroying his property until I find his dirty cum sock. Squidward unfortunately wants it back in exchange for a golden spatula he so happened to have. Well, I take both the rag and the golden cooking utensil and I head back outside. And to Jellyfish Fields. Going to Jellyfish Fields, we see the aftermath of Squidward being gangbanged by Jellyfish. We have our mission for the level. Get Vagisil from the King Jellyfish. 
everyone remembers jellyfish fields, including the music. Here, just give it a listen real quick. After exploiting a little shortcut that I learned back in the day, we wait for the plane to drop its cargo. And unfortunately send Spongebob to an early watery grave. We say hi to Gary. Give ourselves an atomic wedgie for the next golden spatula. And find out how the robots respond. Breaking these machines basically stops the robots from respawning. Hit the button that's hidden behind it, and we get another golden spatula. We say hey to Mermaid Man, which is also not voiced by his respective voice actor. And Spongebob decides it's a great idea to use his tongue to slide down a rocky mountain. Finishing our slide, we get a taste of the many mob arena fights that the game likes to throw at you. Where we have to get past robots to either hit a button, or just get rid of all the robots entirely to progress. Hey Patrick, what's up buddy? His main gimmick is he can pick up and throw shit. Watermelons mostly, but the occasional robot works as well. He just has a little less mobility compared to the homie Spongebob. After turning this starfish into a pincushion, we learn that we can also pick up stun robots, which I alluded to earlier. And right here is the first example of the level designers knowing exactly what they're doing to the player. They're slowly introducing new concepts and new ways to play that could possibly help them further down along the game. They're teaching them very gradually, and this is the first example of that. We then proceed to drain the lake by throwing a couple robots like we just did at a couple water fountains to get another golden spatula. After some more platforming bits, we finally reach the top, and we battle King Jellyfish. Until he starts cussing at us. Now I'm going to purposely fail this slide at the end of Jellyfish Fields. I don't know if you guys were aware of this or not. You can actually get the spatula still by jumping onto this rock here, back onto the slide, and you get just enough speed to get onto the spatula without having to do the whole slide again. Just a little tip from big old Tim here. Don't forget now that we have King Jellyfish's Vagisil, we can finally give it to Squidward. And he rubs it all over himself and gives us our last golden spatula of this level. With that done, let's head on back to Bikini Bottom to head over to downtown for our next level. Arriving in downtown, Mrs. Puff gives us the rundown for this level. Collect steering wheels. I'm not sure why. Something about people not being able to drive their boats without steering wheels? I don't know. Heading to the right of Puffers, we see a cannon shooting sinks and toilets at us. The goal of this is to get the cannon to hit the explosive tiki's at the top of these towers. When we do that, we get rewarded with another golden spatula. Nice. Heading further into downtown, we get to experiment with the sponge ball transformation, which has a unique sense of speed and physics to it. It's actually quite fun just to experiment with this thing. We even get to use Sandy in this level. Oh man, this blew my mind as a kid. Her gimmick is she is OP and broken. Use her whenever you can. Using her lasso to glide and using floating Texas symbols to swing across gaps. She is the absolute pinnacle of the... <gasps> she is an absolute pinnacle of combat and platforming. She is the most OP character in the game. Using Sandy to get across the gaps, we get another golden spatula for our troubles. Into the next area, we do more platforming with Sandy using more Texas symbols to grab a spatula at the end of this area. Before switching to SpongeBob for a quick arena fight that ends with a golden spatula. Hell yeah. Unfortunately, we had to leave downtown for now because we had to come back here with the uh, with the bubble missile power that we get later. 
After we arrive back in Bikini Bottom, we run past Patrick's house into our next level, Goo Lagoon. Talking to Larry the Lobster, he's the one who gives us the task for this level. He needs us to move these light projectors to, to where the light shines on the robot across the goo. Towards the robot across the goo. For some reason, it's blocking Larry's sunlight? I don't know. But it does give us an incentive for this area. We don't know how to cross the goo yet, so all we can really do is continue along Goo Lagoon until maybe we stumble across the robot? Because we can't cross the goo yet. Now from past experiences, I know that coming up, Mrs. Puff wants us to free these kids who are floating around tied to balloons because they're having too much fun, she says. So we pop the three kids balloons that we can before switching over to Patrick for a platforming challenge where we had to use our shiny objects to open it up, of course. Continuing as SpongeBob. We get the last two kids and get a golden spatula for Mrs. Puff. Time to climb the biggest sandcastle in Bikini Bottom for another golden spatula. Heading into the moist cave, we say hi to Gary. Hello, Gary. Hi. Don't say Squidward bought a new sweater. He hints that at the end of this cave is another golden spatula with our name on it. So we make our way there, admiring the the art. Once we get in the middle of the cave, we can hit a button with our head to drop stalagmites. Stalactites? I can, I can never remember the difference. They fall into the goo to help us cross and grab another golden spatula. Now we're at the pier, which Mr. Krabs has decided to build an amusement park. And our mission for Mr. Krabs is to clear out the bumper boats of robots. But first we gotta grab Spongeboy me Bob and platform up this tower to give him another super wedgie for a golden spatula. And I use another trick I learned from the speedrunning community to get this golden spatula without having to use Patrick. But now we have to use him to clear out the bumper boats full of robots for Mr. Krab. And look at that, another launch pad. If I remember correctly, after we use this... Ha, <laughs> nice. We're across the goo now. We can switch to SpongeBob and flip the magnifying glass to shine the robot. Now we can go turn in the quest to Larry to get a golden spatula, but first, let's go ahead and use the menu. We gotta go to Mr. Krabs to get a reward for clearing out the bumper boats with Patrick. Nice, and now we can go to Larry, and that is this level done. Time for the robot Sandy boss fight. I'll go over this quickly, just in case you guys want to revisit the game, which you will. Robot Sandy's attacks are as follows. An elbow drop, the diaper drop, in the clothesline and the chop whenever you get too close the boss is split up into three phases one with pat and two with spongebob phase one avoid the people's elbow wait for the diaper drop then slam down repeat three times for the first phase then pat is up to bat same steps as phase one but with the added clothesline move avoid all the attacks including the diapy drop slam down now we got to pick up sandy's head with patrick and throw it at the exposed wire on the speaker or light fixture whatever it is we repeat the previous steps but when you slam down this time you uppercut that bitch boom crunch Blah. now we're into area two of bikini bottom we do a quick little platforming challenge to top the police station to grab another golden underpants and grab another spatula on top of the Shady Shoals retirement home. Hey, there's Sandy Street Dome. Let's go ahead and visit her next. Oh, good decision. All right, let's get this over with. I don't want to see that again for as long as I live. Just beat all the robots in here so Sandy can finally fix her leak without getting attacked by robots. With Sandy feeling satisfied, let's head back to Bikini Bottom and over to the Rock Bottom Taxi for some advanced darkness platforming. Ooh, a vending machine! I hope they have Kelp Nougat Crunch! Oh. 
good. I'm glad I didn't need to catch that bus. After talking to Mrs. Puff, who gives us our task for this level, he needs us to collect artwork of SpongeBob and Patrick, which the robot stole from a museum and left around the map. Ah, sounds easy enough. Seeing these new sleepy time robots, it reminds me that I do want to bring up the point that every time the game adds a new robot, it adds a wrench in your platforming cog. From the cattle prod robot, to the hammer robot, to the patty cake, and the dog that throws up on your carpet, the kid who takes water balloon fighting too seriously. There are more unique robots in the game that I didn't name off. If you can spot them or you know the name, leave them in the comments. We utilize how broken Sandy is to get this spatula, and not the way it was at all intended. That's how great she is. And then we also get a spatula just for beating this first area. Now we head into the museum and we can clearly see just how superior Sandy is to the rest of the team. We absolutely decimate this room in terms of its platforming challenges with Sandy. Plus we get another spatula out of it. After cleaning up the museum, we get to do more sliding. Some sponge ball puzzles. And we have to switch to Sandy because we got to fix Plankton's uh, dick blender. Had to redo that for him. He gives us a golden spatula as a reward. And then we quickly get out of here because I don't want to see Plankton do that to himself. Well, you actually get two because you get one for finishing this area as well. We do another slide for another golden spatula reward. And we collected all the artwork of Spongebob and Patrick, so we can turn it into Mrs. Puff so she can get off to it. Um, I guess. And she gives us a golden spatula, so we'll just, we'll just grab that and get out of here. I think now is the time for Mermelayer. Like I said two seconds ago, I love Mermelayer. It's my favorite level in the game. From the enemies, to the puzzles, to the platforming challenges and to the Invisible Boatmobile reference that I didn't even notice as a kid. With that being said, the two geriatric heroes need us to turn on the Mermelayer security system that the robots turned off, so they can clean them out. So a little bit of platforming and we get our first spatula of the level for getting past the first area. I think it's time to speed it up a little bit. I got a job for somebody who can throw things! Leave it to us! We switch to Patrick because Mermaid Man can't watch his retirement home girls gone wild. With that we do three throwing puzzles, dodging rocks, balancing on tilting platforms, and avoiding the red spots on the Simon Sets floor. After that we collect a reward from Mermaid Man. There are four buttons around the Mermaid layer we need to hit to turn the security system back on. This is just the first one. This puzzle fooled me as a kid and I'm sure it did others too, so I'll play the full solution to the puzzle. Yeah, I was pissed too. <laughs> now pause. Now there is a room coming up that anybody who is anybody who has played this game and gotten this far has got stuck on for a long time. If you know what that room is, pause the video here and comment it down below or reference it in a way. The next room is just a bunch of platforming challenges, so let's speed it up a little bit, and... Next. Now stop. If this screenshot doesn't make your blood boil, you didn't play this game. But watch this fully through, and you'll never fail it again for when you revisit it. For those who haven't played this game, you have to guide a giant metal ball through this obstacle course, making sure you hit buttons and step on the pressure tiles. Oh shit, wrong clip. Here you go.
Now stop. This is the part of the challenge that kills everybody. So I'm going to slow it down. Pay attention to how I position myself and you will beat it without fail. Easy, right? You're welcome. Now we get to the prawn boss. The fight is kind of mediocre. Just dodge his attack and throw the ball down the non-glowing tiles. Three times and you win. Now that was Mermelair. Let's go take on Robot Pat. I'm going to go through Robot Patrick pretty quickly. He has a couple attacks. He likes to use the slam, spit, spin, and vomit. Oh, and ice breath. Dodge all of them till he shows you his back. back. Hit with a ball or a chop. And each phase makes the platforming a little tougher to hit him. But you got this. I believe in you. With Pat done, we're into the last area of Bikini Bottom. Pat yourselves on the back. If you made it this far, you're almost done. Mr. Krabs tells us we need to clear out the Krusty Krab of robots. So we go do just that. And I get a reward from Mr. K. Another golden spatula. Inside the cum bucket, we grab another sneaky hidden spatula. Right next to this vent. Exiting the chum bucket, let's head over to Spongebob's dream. This level is more of what we did in the other levels all put together. So I want to use this time to talk instead about the love and care Heavy Iron put into making this level. From the moving skybox, to the floating balloon models of the five main characters, heading over their respective dreams, and we go inside each one. Patrick dreams of nothing, just like in the show. He gives you a spatula. Mr. K's dream is just a giant grill with money and patties everywhere. It's another one of those clear the area of robots missions. Going into Squid's dream, you have to do some platforming where you jump on notes and musical instruments to get a spatula at the top. And Sandy's dream, for anybody who loves it, is just a massive slide and tons of Texas memorabilia everywhere. The attention to detail on this level is incredible. You can tell that Heavy Iron are either huge fans of the show or they really did their research. All in all, a beautiful level and quite fun. Now this might be a bit of a betrayal to everybody who likes this level, but at the end of the day, Sand Mountain is just all sliding. So there isn't much to say. If you like the sliding mechanic of the game, you'll love Sand Mountain. I think it's time, boys. I think it's time we wrap up the game. Let's go ahead and head to Mr. K and grab the last spats I need to challenge the last boss. 75 is just what we need. Let's head to the end of the game. The robot SpongeBob has four attacks. The three technically a slap a chop and karate which i know that a lot of people have a hard time dodging so i'll play the video so pay attention to the video it's really easy to dodge and plankton shoots at you which is why i kind of said three technically robot spongebob only attacks with three different moves so the tactic of this fight is to hit the glowing green lights on the robot spongebob whether it be with your 
slam down or your guided bubble or the bowling ball if you can aim it once he goes into his power down mode you have to hit robot plankton with a guided bubble to reactivate the robot sponge once they're all hit you go into the second part of the boss fight a massive platforming challenge utilizing all the things you learned through the game with the bubble bowl the guided bubble and all your combat maneuvers use all that you learn to break all the fuses and end the robots once and for all Break all the fuses, including the ones that are hidden in his brain. And Spongebob goes down for the count. Now you might be asking yourself, Tim, why didn't you do Kelp Forest? Why didn't you do, why didn't you do the Dutchman's Graveyard? Well, to be completely honest with you guys, I wanted to relive what I did as a kid. And as a kid, I didn't do those two levels because as soon as I got 75 spatulas, I ended the game. Now those levels in their own rights are really good, but I kind of wanted to relive just the experience that I had as a kid. But in conclusion, coming back to this game all these years later was such a fun time. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom doesn't show its age at all. The love and care that Heavy Iron put into this game makes it stand out above the piles and piles of, of garbage licensed games that were coming out around the time. It has references from the show for people who watch the show. It is a masterful platformer. The original music sounds like it could come from the show. A absolute platforming gem. The game challenges you from the beginning, slowly establishing new ideas and new concepts with being able to get spatulas with ways the game developers maybe didn't even intend for you to use. You can feel the love from everyone involved in the work. And it shows in the community. Now don't tell anybody I told you, but I stole some content. Yeah, I know. I stole some content. You might not have heard, so come be quiet. You might not know this, but keep it a secret. There's actually a community that speedruns this game. Speedrunning. Spongebob. I know. Speedrunning Battle for Bikini Bottom? I don't know. I think I honestly prefer speedrunning the Spongebob movie game. That's for the best. Spongebob and Patrick, I need you to take down Plankton's propaganda towers. Come to Plank Topo is where we do the movie for you. Plan movie, plan movie, plan movie. <laughs> plan movie. <laughs> he sounds like he's fucking losing it. Actual fucking, actual fucking movie. He sounds like he's being force-fed moving. There's this guy. He streams on Twitch, but he also has a YouTube channel. His name is Shift. Now, I stole some of his content. So don't tell him I told you, okay? It's top secret. Don't, don't tell him. Now, what's crazy is this guy has put years of his life into perfecting this masterpiece of a game. So you can't tell him. Because he, he, he might he might he might end me and I have reason to believe that he's making a series on YouTube called speedrunning explained where where he explains the speedrun of Spongebob out for a bikini bottom I know that sounds fucking crazy 
It's it's like the ramblings of a madman or something. Some say he's gone crazy though. He's been playing the SpongeBob movie as of late. I even I I got I got a video sent to me from a accredited source showing just how crazy he's getting from it. <laughs> Poopy movie emergency. This is a major Poopy movie emergency. It's time for a movie, movie, movie in the movie with the movie. We have to see if Shift can defeat the Dennis man so we can keep playing Poopy Mo Poopy in the screw movie. <laughs> movie forever. No, but in all honesty, I love Shift. I watch him on the regular. I left a link to his Twitch channel and his YouTube channel in the description of the video, as well as a link to the Speedrunning Explained Part 1 series that he has started. Drop him a line in his comment section. Tell him that Big Tim wants him to be a part of the Annex family. And I got one more thing I want to say. Shift, if you're watching this video, this... This, uh... I just want to say from the bottom of my heart that thank you for being who you are and doing what you do for such a, a beautiful game. And I know that you've said in the past that you do it because you want to do it, not because you think you you owe the community something. But I just want to let you know that your sponge that you did came at a really great time for me I, I was going through some really tough times with where I was and I am in a better place now and thankfully your your sponge was there when I really needed it uh till I got here so shift if you're watching this thank you so much for being who you are you always have a long time fan in me and uh thanks again I mean it and that being said, thank you Battle for Bikini Bottom and Heavy Iron Studios for teaching us a lesson in fun. Oh my god, the nostalgia! No, hold on, hold on, hold on.